Welcome to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva. We're at the ITU headquarters, and I'm really pleased to have with me Yves Dacour, who's the Director General of the International Red Cross. I believe you have 19,000 full-time staff, basically most of them in war zones. Is yes, that right? that's true, absolutely. Yeah, 1,000 in Geneva. I think in Geneva we are also developing international humanitarian law, so that's part of our mandate, the law regulate war, and 18,000 people in the field. You will find us in Syria, in Ukraine, in Sudan, in Congo, in Myanmar, in Afghanistan, all the places where the situation is difficult. Phenomenal. We know why they're there, but how does AI impact what they're doing on the ground? It's interesting you mentioned AI because in a way AI is impacting us uh, through different elements. First, data. As an organization, we want to assist but also protect people. And the way to protect people is, in fact, to receive data. So if I want to protect you in a prison, for example, you will give me your data. I'll be very careful about where you're coming from, your name, what happens to you, where is your family, and I will protect this data. And of course, I will then make sure my colleagues are following that up, connecting with the family. We still have today data which are old hundreds years ago, which is quite amazing if you think about it. The other way, of course, is everything related with our way we operate. In, in order to be able to do assessments, we use today big data algorithm uh, to complement our assessments on water, in sanitation or health, we do that. And the third one is much more into our interactions with, uh, I would say, warrior around the world. We see that autonomous weapons and AI is much more used on battlefield than it was 10 years ago. And here, the key question is human agency. Do we want tomorrow having weapons who can make decisions who needs to be killed among us uh, without human control? That's the big question. Let's take something very simple. Um, prisoner swaps, which the Red yeah. Cross is very involved in. Can AI help with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, AI could use that with algorithm, which could, for example, help to know, uh, you know who should go there, how it works. But, very important, we would control the algorithm in order the algorithm is not biased, that the algorithm is really principled. Because here, typically, what we want is to be able to choose, let's say, not just a swap, but choose the most vulnerable people among the group. I mean, we will be very careful that our algorithm is not doing that automatically, but is following very, very clear principled rules. What if those algorithms that you, that data you've got access to gets into the wrong hands? That would be dramatic for us, yeah. Because I think the the first thing is it will immediately break the trust that people have with you know with us. I mean, they give us their data because they trust us. Uh, if our data will be uh, you know hacked and you know put publicly, it will break the trust, and B, it will put a lot of people in danger. We're living in a world where uh, their data means something. We're talking about death and life, not just about publicity or whatever. So that will change dramatically the life of people. Let's go back to maybe the 70s, with some of the severe famines we had in East Africa mm -hmm. uh, with droughts. What would AI have helped you with back then that you didn't have then? What AI would have done totally differently, it would have empowered people differently. Not so much us, but the power of the people. And uh, people would have certainly models which will allow them to be much more aware about, in fact, if drought would come, and also much more interested about their decision making. So it will help them, for example, to connect about the numbers of animals, what it means to water by day, how they would look at that. So it would bring them a lot of data, and not just data for their own family, but data for the community and the country. It would have not, let's be clear, prevent them all, uh, but it would have certainly make them behave differently. So it would empower people, that's one, which is important. And B, it would have empowered the community too, because one of the things which happened normally, typically in the 70s and 80s, the international community invested too late. When they started to do that, it was already too late. When you have a drought or when you have a famine, you need to intervene before the shock arrived, just before. And again, it would have helped evidence uh, it would have forced, in fact, the community to intervene before. Over the four days here, what are you, what's your objectives and what would you hope to see by the end? My main objective is to make sure that we continue to have a, a, a very inclusive dialogue. And it's a difficult, on complex issue. And the complex issue is, is human agency in AI and how do we make sure that AI is really developed for good? I mean, this is the su this is the, the title of the summit. That's always so interesting. But to do that, you need to have an inclusive dialogue between state, civil society, or international organizations like mine, and trying to find a way to do that. And it will occupy us for quite a while, I think. It's a difficult question. Last question. What's the state of the world from your perspective right now? A difficult one because the big issues are global ecology or climate change, social, political, violence, I mean, all that. And it will require global solution. 
and right now the nation state together when i look at all the nation they don't produce these days any consensus and any global solutions for a lot of reasons so i think we are in a world and we feel it where you have global issues impacting all of us but no global solutions and that is the equations that we need to find and to solve well, that's Yves Dacot of the International Committee of the Red Cross. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.